Spring is here and the 2nd of April brings us also something new, and that is the latest release of Home Assistant. Today we are going to look at what's new in Home Assistant 2025.4. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Let me try and be as short as I can with video today. So let's jump straight into what's new. First thing for all of you that like UI is the changes or the new dashboard. This one is still experimental and it's very similar to the one I showed or a couple of them that I showed previously that were hex components, auto-generated dashboards. This one relies on the areas, so you better have your devices and entities sorted through the areas around your home. Go to dashboards, click on add dashboard, click on areas experimental, give it a title, areas, and click create. You should now see a new dashboard added to your home assistant, click on it, and this is auto-generated experimental dashboard based on the areas inside your home assistant. As you can see, we have home with all of the areas divided here. The entities are auto-generated and tile is used for most of the components or most of the entities, except of course cameras. These are actually cameras, so you can see the image here. These cameras are offline, so you cannot see images here. You can edit it, and here you can disable entity. It will be added to the back of the list. These are, of course, areas. You can sort it by dragging and dropping because, yeah, we have drag and drop inside Home Assistant now. But you can also go or jump into specific area. For example, let's look at loft. And here you can also customize this specific area. But that's not all. You can, for example, also take control. When we are already talking about the UI changes, besides this auto-generated dashboard experimental for the areas, yes, we now have also time inside Home Assistant. Click on pencil, plus sign, type in clock. And while we did previously already have time and date inside Home Assistant, we now have a way of displaying this time inside Home Assistant. You can change the size of it from small to medium to large. You can display seconds if you want. And you can also play with the time format, but also change the time zone. So for example, you can have two clocks, one displaying your current time zone and the other one displaying time zone of maybe me. And voila, you now have a clock or time card inside your UI. Yes, while we have ended the year of the voice, we still have improvements with the voice. First off, there is an update to the wizard that guides you through the process of setting up any voice compatible devices inside Home Assistant. These can range from the Home Assistant Voice Assist PE all the way to the smaller ones that we used previously and everything in between. The setup process will make it more clear for you on what you are doing and how this will impact your future use of the system. But besides that, there is also update to the voice and how it is handled. Now it will be able to continue the conversation without starting with the wake up word to give your answer. And that means that we will have a more natural way of talking with voice assist, like we have with other smart assistants on the market. But for this you need to have LLMs enabled. This will not work with the system out of box if you do not have any kind of LLM enabled. Plus something that was asked previously, now there is improvement to that. You can start conversation, but from within Home Assistant. For example, if you leave your front door open or if you forget to, for example, close the garage door, turn off the lights or set something else in the system, the system can now call you via the voice assistant and tell you that, for example, the garage door is still open after 5-10 minutes. Do you want me to close it? And then it will wait for your answer. So you can give an answer yes or no to keep it open or to close it if you want to do so. Plus something just to keep you on the toes, there is also option now to add pre-announced sound. For example, like other smart speakers have. Before it tells you that the timer is out, it could for example ring the bell and then tell that timer has expired or something similar. This is great so you don't get scared of something going on. Plus that pre-announcement that can be customized can be used also as additional warning. So you can play with various pre-announcements to know exactly for what each announcement is made. I will not be going further into details about these voice changes, but if you would like to see this more detailed, 
I can make a separate video and show you how this works, how you can play and how you can also extend it, if you want. New month, new release and also new update to the backups. As you know, there were a lot of changes with the backups this year. We have added a bunch of external repositories, better way of handling automatic backups inside Home Assistant, encryption and decryption for all of you that do not like the keys, but we have one further improvement to all of you that are Nabucasa subscribers. That means that if you already have Nabucasa account and you have backup that is stored in Nabucasa Cloud, if you want to restore your system, you can now log in into your Home Assistant account during the setup or initial configuration of the Home Assistant and it will pull that backup from the cloud. That means that the process is much faster. Previously, even if you had Nabucasa account, you would still need to get that file down to your system, use USB stick or something else and load that file locally into your new Home Assistant instance. This is now faster, better and also cleaner for all of you that need to restore your system. Plus, as always, there are some new integrations, other noteworthy changes, so quickly let's go through them. First of all, we have Pterodactyl. This allows you to control and also monitor your gaming server. Then we have ability to use remote calendars. This is the feature that I would like to record a separate video on, overall on the calendars once again, because a lot of things have changed. We can now use local calendars, connect other calendars, for example, from the Google, but now, as it says, we also can use the external URLs and add them inside Home Assistant. And also Bosch Alarm. This allows you to integrate Home Assistant with your current Bosch Alarm setup and monitor the system alarm and control state. And I will not be going through all of the noteworthy changes, but for example, we have improvement to the OpenAI conversation integration. SmartThings has received a lot of updates lately, and this one is furthermore improving on that. From other noteworthy changes, we have added on how Home Assistant Yellow and Home Assistant ZBT1, device previously known as SkyConnect, are now updated through the Home Assistant UI. I cannot show you that because I already did the update and then later remember that I should have probably recorded that update process. Also, we now have breadcrumbs inside the entities where we can see, for example, from where this entity is coming from. For example, device area, etc, etc. Backup now also provides sensors. For example, last successful backup was this date and time and the next scheduled backup is this and that. And based on that, of course, you cannot just display that sensor inside Home Assistant, but you can use it, for example, in automations, if you need. Device selector inside the Blueprints allows now filtering by model ID. And we also have a very big improvement to the variables inside automations and script. This one deserves a separate video, but I know that other content creators will be releasing them, so I will not be doing so. What it does, it allows all the variables to be picked up within the automation or script. They are not section dependent as previously, they are now accessible anywhere inside the script or automation. Plus a big change to templates. A lot more template functions have been added to Home Assistant. Combine, difference, flatten, floor entities, intersect, hashing functions, shuffling, symmetric difference, type of union, and this for all of you that are playing with templates can really, really help you with your future automations. This time we do not have that many breaking changes or backward incompatible changes, but there are some. For example, automations and scripts, variable scopes. Since now variable is tracked overall throughout the automation, if you previously had sections or sequences, you have to watch out and check that you are not repeating the same variable that has different values in the different parts of a single automation. Plus a big breaking change for all of you that are using Relink and you are like to have very long passwords. Unfortunately, there is now a limit of only 31 characters in your password. You cannot go above that number. This is current limitation of the API and unfortunately, Home Assistant just had to abide by the API rules. So if you do have rolling cameras, if your password is longer than 31 character, remember to swap it out for, for example, 27 or 31. Just reduce it and it will still work. But as always, this was just a brief scheme through everything that's been changed in the April release of Home Assistant. If you want to look at the details, go ahead. The list is very, 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 very long. I really do hope that you did find this video interesting. And if you did find it interesting, don't forget to give it a thumbs up so that more people can see it. Because yes, giving a video a thumbs up means that the video is good and the YouTube will recommend it to more people. 
If you have any kind of a comment, question or suggestion for next video, of course, you are more than welcome to leave your comment down in a comment section below. And before I wrap up the video, I would like to say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you already know the drill. You can go down and click on the join button and become a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can as always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.